Hello, welcome. Uh, this is the second part that covers the topic of construction claims. Uh, in this video, you will learn about, uh, continue the discussion uh, and focus on one uh, reason of claims, which is schedule delays and how to analyze such uh, delay claims. Uh, so we'll, we'll understand the types of delays that happens in, uh, happen in, con in construction. Um, and calculate the excusable time extension for contractors using different uh, different analysis uh, approaches here. So from a previous video, check the link that I shared at the bottom of the video here. Uh, we covered the different reasons, uh, and we now we're covering here uh, the last reason, which is delay claims. Um, most delay uh, most claims have time or requests to extend the time uh, or the schedule of the project by the contractor. Um, and um, the, the, the issue here uh, is how to calculate these time extensions that really the contractor has the right uh, for, for, for such extension. Uh, and to do that, there, there, you need some information here. So this is the, again, another proof that documentation in construction projects is really important. So you need to have a record of the as-planned schedule of the project, and you also have to need, need to have the latest as-built schedule, um, the, the, the record of that or the documentation of that. Uh, what are the actual times or when, when different activities were done? Um, and uh, the, the idea here, the general idea, is that the difference between as-planned and as-built uh, uh, will be kind of the addition or delay or of activities or delays. <clears throat> so if the as-built finish before the as-planned schedule, uh, this means that you were able to th do things faster or you got rid of some activities. But typically, the as-built schedule is longer than the as-planned schedule, and that's due to things took longer for you to do or additional activities were added. Um, so now, if, if now you have a delay uh, and the contractor would like to be excused of that delay and extend the finish time in the contract, uh, we need to understand and differentiate between three types of claims here. There's the non-excusable, and generally there is excusable delays, which have two types. So there is excusable non-compensable, and excusable compensable. So you can think of it like a, 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 a hierarchy tree, kind of. So you start with, there is excusable, non excusable, and then the excusable, there are two subtypes, compensable and non compensable. So let's see each one of these. So non excusable delays are any delays that are caused uh, by factors within the control of the contractor. So all of these are examples that contractors should part of the plan for the project is to be prepared for such uh, issues. Uh, and, and if such delay happen, uh, the, the contractor is liable, uh, and they, uh, if, if the delay in that activity will extend the project duration beyond the finish time in the contract, they are subject to liquidated damages. And that's the, that's the main thing here, why you need to ask for time extension, because you will be charged liquidated damages or penalties for not finishing on time. So it will translate into money at the end. Um, the other type of delays is excusable but non-compensable. So things that happened uh, be not because of the owner and not because of the contractor. Uh, they, they're out of control issues. Uh, so, so for example, disasters, force majeure, uh, uh, third-party damages or things that are not within the possible control uh, of the project team or things that are imposed by the government, uh, uh, actions and laws. So things like that will require uh, some kind of excuse to, to the contractor, uh, but it's only in the form of time extension. This is why it's called uh, non-compensable, meaning that you only allow it to finish later than the contract finish time, but you're not giving additional money for that. 
Uh, so that's that's the uh, idea here. And w because of the delay analysis here, it's more focused on the time analysis. Then uh, we're not focused on the compensable bar part, but we need to differentiate between excusable delays that are compensable and non-compensable. Now, what about the compensable delays? So compensable delays are delays that happen because of issues that within the control of uh, the client or the owner or negligence of the client or the client representative, which is the architect. So these are some examples here, which kind of relate to uh, also the other reasons we covered for uh, construction claims in the previous video. So the contracts generally allow for the contractor to have a time extension and also be uh, compensated uh, monetary uh, value here for whatever additional costs that happen because of the, uh, the shortcomings uh, from the owner or the architect side. Uh, so we need to, now it's not that easy, like it, it's not like this is compensable, this is not compensable and you add up all the delays and kind of figure this out. Uh, construction schedules are uh, is a network of activities and, and you have if, if and, and, and this is one thing I didn't mention is that you need to be aware of the CPM calculations uh, uh, and CPM method, critical path method uh, so that's kind of a prerequisite to this lesson uh, so uh, here the contractor will perform delay analysis to justify their delay claim and the architect will also perform delay analysis to verify that delay claim. And, and these, uh, this delay analysis can be performed in a retro retrospective uh, way or prospective. So retrospective is after the fact, things happen already and you analyze the delay. Prospective is something happened that you expect to push the schedule in the future and you prepare for that by projecting the possible delays that will happen because of today's actions of the owner um, and, and that's kind of the it's prospecting perspective analysis in this way um, there are many many ways for performing delay analysis a lot of studies and uh, researchers kind of suggesting different methods every method is 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 uh, comes with uh, uh, shortcomings uh, and also advantages so you have to be aware so I'm, I'm listing here only three. There are actually more than that. Uh, we're going to cover in depth in this lesson the first two. And the, the third one will cover con conceptually uh, and how it overcomes the shortcomings of the first and the second uh, analysis approach approaches we have. So the, the first one is impacted as planned analysis. And what you need to do for the to have before this analysis is to have the as planned schedule and the record of delays. So as planned schedule is before you start the project, this is something you produce to be able and, and to share with the owner to be able to start the project. And then over the project, your records documentation is, is having a, a track of all the delays that happened. Um, so the idea here is that the analysis or whoever performs the analysis, the contractor or the architect, inserts these ex excusable delays and excusably covers compensable and compensable in the as planned schedule. And that results in another version of the schedule we call it the impacted as planned. Um, and then you will perform the critical path method calculations to figure out what's the duration of the impacted as planned. Also, you will perform CPM calculations to figure out the duration of the as planned schedule, which should be from uh, an information you got already from the as planned schedule if it's not uh, available already. Uh, so now the difference between the completion time or the total duration of the impacted as planned and the as planned schedules, this is the extension period that's owed to the contractors. So this is the total excusable extension to uh, that can be given to the contract. So now how to insert these excusable delays. So let's say an example here you have excavation and uh, piping activities and the excavation was delayed for five days to remove contaminated soil that was found at the end of the seventh day. Uh, so how to insert that five-day delay? Uh, 
there are different ways uh, in the analysis. You can have the 10 days original as planned uh, duration of the activity to be like one chunk, and then add the five days delay after that. So it's not following the exact scenario, but it's still giving you the same kind of uh, end result if you follow the exact scenario. So you do seven days of excavation, you have five days delay, and then you have three days uh, remaining excavation days. At the end, you will, total will be 15 days. So regardless of how you insert the uh, excusable delays, um, it, it's, um, it will result into the same kind of conclusion at the end. One thing here is uh, for, for our analysis, we'll use this first simplified way because it basically reduces, it results in less activities in your network. Uh, but of course, this is the most accurate one. Uh, so we have here uh, this example, and I will solve it on my board. So in this example here, we have um, six activities, A through F. We're giving the immediately preceding activities, I, P, A, and the duration of each. So A is a starting activity, B, C, and E depend on A, D depends on B, and F depends on C, D, and E. Um, and then we have the record of delays and type of what type of delays that happen and the time impact of each one. <clears throat> so this is the uh, board here. We're going to go over um, the solution of this uh, exercise. So the first thing you need to do is start marking the delays and say, is this excusable, is this not excusable? So you're trying to figure out which delays here you need to focus on. So the first one, bad weather, uh, that, that's, we, we can say that's excusable. If, if you're not sure, um, check with me in the, in, for, for any problem I give to you. But it should be more detailed, like it's uh, abnormal or uh, unusual kind of weather, then it will be excusable. Uh, the next one is late material and low proactivity for the second and third delays. And these are within the contractor uh, control, so these are non-excusable. And then differing site conditions, this qualifies as excusable and even compensable. Um, so now we have only the first and the fourth delays to focus on. Uh, also need to visualize what's the, how are you going to insert these delays, where are you going to insert them in the project schedule. So you need to show the schedule network and then um, understand where these delays will be inserted in the network. Again, it's very important to check um, how to draw uh, schedule networks, and, and I will post the video, uh, a link to this video uh, 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 in the comments section of this uh, lesson here. So again, this is a very simple network of uh, this simple project. Uh, and I see here that delay one is impacting B, C, and E. Uh, or delay four is impacting only E. So kind of I'm showing here that B, C, and E are impacted B and C are impacted by A, and E is impacted by both the delays here, uh, the first and the fourth. After you kind of have this understanding, filtering first the delays, which one is excusable, and focus on the excusable delays, compensable or non-compensable, uh, see where you're going to insert them, then the next step is to calculate the duration of the ASPLAN schedule. So we're not inserting any delays yet. So we're putting the durations, and then following the CPM method, you do the forward pass calculations. So you start from the beginning of the project by time zero, which is the end of day zero, beginning of day one. So you're starting with the first day of the project. Um, zero to five, that's the duration relationship. And then you're, you're flowing or moving forward from the beginning of the project to the end. Um, so five will be the beginning of activities B, C, and E, the early start. And then you add the duration to get the early finish. So these blue numbers are the early times, the earliest possible time to start 
and finish each one of these activities. And then you can see here F depends on D, C, and E. So the earliest time to start F is the latest finish time of the preceding activities. So 18, 11, and 18. That means the earliest time to start F is 18. 18 plus 2 will be 20. So this means the project duration following the as planned schedule will be 20 weeks. I can stop here and move on to the next step, but just to um, show you the complete kind of process for CPM calculation, I will do the backward pass calculation to figure out the latest times for the activities to start and finish. Um, and that will help at the end kind of you reaching the zero at the back again at the beginning of the project. So you're moving backward pass. Um, and that will help you to verify that you have a, a critical path of activities uh, that is expanding from the beginning to the end of the project. We're lucky here. We have two critical paths. Uh, a, B, D, F, and A, E, F. Uh, so they both paths here kind of control the project duration to be 20 weeks. But you don't have to do the backward pass and figuring out the critical activities, but it's, it's a good step to verify and make sure, you make you more confident about, yes, it is 20 weeks, I have critical paths and I can see them. And I, uh, so just to verify you answer more. Uh, but moving to the next step. Now I know the duration of the as planned duration, uh, as planned schedule. The next will be calculating duration of the impacted as planned schedule. Uh, and there, the here we'll insert the delays. Now I will insert the delays by B bar, C bar, E bar, referring to the delays for activities B, C, and E. And then I will do the CPM calculations for pass. I will end up here with the duration to be 23 weeks. Uh, just for the fun, I will do the backward pass uh, calculations, kind of figuring out what's the what's happening here with critical activities. Now I'm dealing with where I see I have one critical path. But the real number I'm after here is the total duration of 23 days, which I can get only with the forward pass. So now, to summarize everything, the contractor is entitled for a time extension that I can calculate as the difference between the duration of the impacted as planned schedule and the duration of the as planned schedule, which will bring me to three weeks. So the contractor here is entitled or will not pay liquidated damages for delays that are within three weeks. That doesn't mean that they will not delay, not pay liquidated damages, but they are kind of given uh, a kind of a, an allowance to be delayed for three weeks. Any delay beyond three weeks, they will have to pay for liquidated damages. So that was the solution of this exercise, applying the impacted as planned uh, analysis. The next method is collapsed as built analysis. So you need here the as built schedule plus the records of delays you have. Uh, you will do the CPM calculations on the as built schedule and then you will remove, uh, so you take out the excusable delays from the as-built schedule and that will collapse the as-built to be called the collapsed as-built schedule. You do the CPM calculations on that collapsed as-built schedule and then you will calculate the difference between the total duration of the as-built and the collapsed as-built schedules and that will be the time extension that's owed to the contractor. So that's, that's the logic here. Remove the excusable delays from the as-built um, and then find the difference between the as-built and the collapsed as-built. Uh, so let's uh, see the so solution of this second example, which is matches with the first example. I'm showing here the as-built, but uh, not the as-planned. So it should be the same project, uh, just showing here other or different information than the uh, information we had before. It's the same delays, but instead of the as planned, I'm showing the as built uh, schedule. So let's let's work on this example using the collapse as built analysis. Um, so from the previous ex example, we learned that the second and third delay are not excusable, so we're not including them in the uh, analysis. We're focused only in the first and the fourth delay. And these will be impacting 
uh, activities B, C, and E. Ne the next step would be to calculate uh, or apply CPM uh, calculations on the as-built uh, schedule and to find out the du total duration here. Uh, I will use the duration given in the table um, and apply the CPM calculation. So forward pass, you end up here uh, with 25 weeks total uh, as built duration. For fun, we can go the backward pass calculations and figure out the total, uh, like the the critical activities. And and the end here again, ending up with 25 weeks, like we ended up or we figured out from the forward pass. The next step is to calculate the collapsed uh, as built duration. Um, now it's the same schedule, but the thing here is that I'm shrinking the duration of B, C, and E. I'm taking out the uh, number of days that um, are uh, related, r relate to the excusable delays. So B has a 12-day as built, but it was impacted by delay 1, uh, which has two days here impact. So 12 minus 2 will be 10. And I will do the similar calculation for C and E. E, remember, it's impacted by two delay events, uh, two plus one days, so that's three days total, out of 16, that will bring us to a collapsed duration of 13. And then I will do the CPM calculation to figure out here uh, that the collapsed as build duration is 23 weeks. And then by this method, the idea here is the difference between the durations of the as built and the collapse as built that will be the excusable delay for the contractor, which is two weeks. So it's the same project dealing with a little different um, data here using the as built. We ended up with two weeks time extension. So what's happening here? So in the impacted as planned, I ended up with three weeks. The collapse as built, I ended up with two weeks. It's the same project. So. This means that if an uh, 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 analysis is using one method and the, another one using the other method, you end up with different conclusions. And that, that's, that's, uh, that's not a cool thing to have when you're analyzing a claim that's asking for time extension and money here. So what's, uh, what's happening here? Um, the issue here is that these two methods will give you different results if you have concurrent delays happening in parallel paths that are initially both critical. So that's the issue here, is that you have concurrent delays. At some point, there were two ev delay events happening concurrently. Um, so let's explain that with this very small example. So we have here a small kind of project, ABC, uh, very one path here, very simple path. And this is the uh, record of delays I have here two excusable impacting A and B. Um, and if you do the as plan, so 3 plus 6 plus 4, that would be 13. If you insert the 4 and 1, so 5, that will be 18 days or weeks. So you have 5 weeks. Uh, the collapse as built, um, so add up all the durations here, but take out the, uh, the excusable delays. Um, so if you add up all the delays, that will be 21 weeks. If you take out the five uh, days excusable, that will give you, again, uh, five weeks uh, excusable delay total. So if you have, of course, that's a very simplified example, uh, but if you have multiple paths within the network and only one of them is critical, the both impacted as planned and collapse as built will give you the same uh, answer. So just need to be aware of the limitation of these two methods, which moved us to the concurrent delay analysis, which should be more accurate. Um, so the idea here is that the as-planned schedule is compared to the as-built uh, schedule. Um, concurrent delays, the definition is that they, they on the same day, two activities and two different paths are delayed by maybe one, the same delay events or different delay event, but uh, there is kind of an incident or two activities will be delayed, but they are not in the same path. There are two different paths during the same day that that impact happens. 
Um, the point here is now when you have concurrent delays, you have to analyze different combinations that happen of these delays. So, because this will impact the legal remedy or the outcome of the claim. So, the idea here is that if you have any delay that's concurrent with an excusable delay, so for example, the possible combinations here, excusable with unexcusable, excusable with compensable, and excusable with unexcusable, um, and even you can add to it comp compensable, like all three things happening together here, um, the remedy here is time extension. So, whatever is concurrent with excusable, uh, which excusable here implies also it's excusable and non-compensable, anything that happens concurrent to excusable will give the uh, contractor the ability to ask for time ex extension because uh, excusable are generally relate to acts of God and regardless of what we do, you do a mistake, I do a mistake, you know, things happen uh, and, and, and God wills, uh, an earthquake happens in this day, so it's, it's, it's gonna happen anyway, regardless of what mistakes were done by whoever. Um, the other uh, case left out here is when you have a compensable with non-excusable. Uh, so it's kind of mistakes are done by two parties in the same time. So compensable are, is a mistake done by the owner, Non-excusable is a mistake done by the contractor, and they happen concurrently here. Uh, so what's the outcome? There are two rules, like two cases of court, uh, or two records of court cases. They call it here the AZ and the FAIR rule, but the idea is the, f the first one is uh, they are easy on the contractor, so they say that you, you, you have time extension uh, and you're, you're not going to pay liquidated damages. The fair rule, uh, I'm not sure why they call it fair, but they are a little harsher on the contractor and say you don't have a time extension, you, you don't, you're not allowed to have time extension because of that concurrent delay, uh, and if there is any, that extension causes you to finish beyond the project contract uh, finish time, you will have to pay liquidated damages. So we'll not do the concurrent delay analysis in this course, but at least you know what's happening here. The technicality and the specifics of how you do the analysis is not covered in this uh, lesson or, or class. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in other videos. Take care.